Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the September 12, 2018 meeting of the Ascension Parish Planning Commission. And I said, everybody, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please let the record reflect that all commissioners, with the exception of Anthony Christie, are present tonight. Can we get staff introduction, please? Stacy Webb, Secretary for Planning and Development. Cody Martin, the Attorney for the Planning Commission. Jerome Fournier, Director of Planning and Development. <laughs> Eric Poche, Parish Planner. Lance Brock, Zoning Official. Sean Chereau, Engineering Review Agency. Uh, moving on to the Chairman's comments, and what we have on this agenda item is a presentation uh, by CPEX regarding the master plan, and I see Ms. Marshall in the audience. The floor is yours, ma'am. I believe I have a, I believe I have a presentation coming up. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm Lauren Marshall with the Center for Planning Excellence, and we are working with Ascension Parish on a comprehensive um, master land use plan for the parish, in which we um, hear from the public what what they would like to see in the future of Ascension Parish over about the next 20 years, and then come up with a plan to realize that. So first of all, I'll go over our general approach and process. Uh, the process takes about a year and a half, and from March to June of this year, we did interviews, tours, outreach, and participation to identify community values. <coughs> Right now, from about June of this year to December of this year, we will be defining existing conditions, evaluating alternative futures, which is what I'm here to talk to you about tonight, and developing a vision. And then um, next, we will develop policies and actions to achieve that vision, develop a plan, and have public review of that plan, and then adopt a strategic implementation and action plan to achieve the vision and begin code implementation. And that'll happen by about the middle of 2019. So one of the big questions that, um, it, that we're trying to answer is how will Ascension Parish accommodate growth and what kind of neighborhoods do we want and need? And to start answering that question, we had three workshops on June 4th, 5th, and 6th, which I believe um, you, some of you attended and we've, uh, my colleague Janet Tharp has spoken to you about before. And so I'll give a quick reminder of the main topics at each workshop and then move on to the, the scenarios, which I'm here to talk to you about tonight. Um, we had 22 tables of, of people attend our three workshops, and the overarching topics for all of the workshops were infrastructure issues like disrepair and lack of functionality, drainage, sewage, outdoor recreation, and the preservation of natural areas. And I'll go over the main topics at each of the um, locations of our meetings. First, we had a meeting at Oak Grove Primary. Uh, the key topics there were transportation infrastructure, drainage, sewage, recreation, and putting infrastructure before development. We also had a meeting at Lamar Dixon. Um, some of the key topics there were green space and preservation of that green space, uh, connectivity, having daily and weekly services within walking and biking distance to reduce car travel, also recreation here again, and infrastructure, again, putting infrastructure before development. And then we also had a meeting at Lowry Elementary in Donaldsonville, and the key topics there were green space and preservation of that, um, new schools, and the, the fact that the West Bank may be overlooked in some of um, Ascension Parish business, and then the separation of industry and residential areas. And so next I'll show a couple of the workshop maps to uh, remind how, how we did the exercises at the workshop. So this is one, one of the tables at Lamar Dixon, and attendees placed stickers on the maps to show where they would like to see different types of development in the future. And this is um, one of those tables. They, the key topics were preserving outdoor space, um, connectivity, and then having services close by. And then we also had... Um, a table like this one at Oak Grove Primary who chose not to place any stickers, but they discussed issues like roadway improvements, having a moratorium on development, using the tax money to fix roads, and protecting trees. So we had a, a whole uh, range of responses. And then we combined every single uh, map and sticker that we received 
and digitized them. And through that, we're able to use computer mapping to show patterns that came out of those, those responses. So here is all of the stickers that were placed. And you can see the different types of development show up in different areas of the parish. And we also were able to see um, different categories of development. So this, for example, is where all the commercial stickers were placed. And you can see that the darker it gets, the more stickers were placed in that area. And here's where all the roads were drawn in that either need improvement or uh, people also desired new roads in certain places. And so from the information on these maps and all the input we've gotten, we have uh, created scenarios for the public to respond to. So the scenarios are going to illustrate the different ways the parish could develop in the future. And um, I'll show how we build one of those scenarios. And what I'm going to show you tonight is using hand-drawn sketches, but for the open houses that we'll have on September 26th and 27th, we'll use digi digital renderings. So first we start with the base map of the parish. And then we start with the first, uh, a key assumption. And the key assumption under this scenario is to limit the development of wetlands, and that's shown in green on this map. And next, it might be a little tough to see, but can you see the brown hatch that has appeared in the northern and middle part of the parish? That is another assumption that we might make for a scenario, and that's to protect stable, in, stable areas and support <coughs> infill for those. And that would involve managing congestion, improving connections to I-10, and developing supportive infrastructure for neighborhoods that already exist. And then we'd add in a way to, uh, a way you could add open space or protect open space in the parish, and that would include uh, enhancing and connecting to the river corridors, creating a green corridor between Gonzales and the Mississippi River, uh, improving drainage, protecting access to nature and wetlands, and preserving rural character where it exists. Then we might layer on a transportation network. And in this scenario, um, the key assumptions are to improve connectivity throughout the parish to support stable neighborhoods and encourage desired development, set up opportunities to strengthen the link between the east and west banks, and improving bike and pedestrian infrastructure. And then finally, we would add land use. And that's um, what you can see on this slide. These are places where certain types of development could occur. For example, the uh, light blue uh, blobs you can see near the river are industrial. And so that is that is one way that the parish could develop in the future. So in this scenario, the airline highway would continu continue as a traditional commercial corridor. And then um, around the Darrow area would be a uh, conservation of open space with a mixed-use node in that area. And this is one example of... Um, of a scenario that we could show at the open houses for people to give their feedback on. And we will have four of these. And to show the impact of each scenario, we'll use indicators. And these on the screen right now are examples from another project. Um, but indicators <coughs> can show how the different scenarios could impact people's daily lives and impact the parish. So from this project, we showed um, future housing mix, like what, um, what each scenario would show in multifamily, senior housing, attached housing, and detached housing. You could show the walk trips per unit that might be generated from a certain development type. So this is a way for people to compare scenarios and what they would mean for their daily lives. And this is um, an example of the open houses we'll have on September 26th and 27th. We will present each of the four scenarios that we're creating to the public and ask for their feedback on each one, what they like and don't like about each one, and why. And um, we will use that input that we get on September 26th and 27th to create a draft vision. And then we'll bring that draft vision back to the public in later in the fall and get their feedback on that too. So we, we really hope that you will attend and that everyone uh, who finds out about this will attend these open houses we're having on September 26th and 27th so we can get as much feedback as possible and know how, know how the plan should move forward. So Wednesday, September 26th, we'll be at Gonzales Civic Center. And these are in the evening from 5.30 to 8. And then Thursday, September 27th, we'll be at Lower Elementary again in Donaldsonville. I believe that's it, unless anybody has any questions. I just want to just jump in and and, um, and and thank you very much for all the effort that you guys are doing. It's 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 really, you know, 
it's a yeoman's work, but it's it's got to get done. But to the public, I, I wouldn't. I would say to you, this is really important for you to come and attend. Um, we need the public's participation. The, the quality of the master plan that we produce, you know, is is um, is really going to be dependent on the participation of the general public. Um, every one of you, you may you may think I don't know anything about this, but your ideas, your thoughts, um, your opinions matter a great deal, and uh, so I encourage you to please, please come on those days and 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 participate. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Well, it's it's great work that y'all are doing, and uh, it's a great presentation. And I would encourage everyone to attend the open house. Thank you, Ms. Marshall, for being Thank here you. tonight. Thank you very really much. Really appreciate it. All right, moving on to item number six is the comment period for any item, any agenda item. If you're here to speak on any agenda item, you will get the opportunity to speak during the uh, public hearing, if there is a public hearing on that. But if you want to speak on any other item that may not have a public hearing, we're going to open that up now. And seeing no takers, we will move on. All right, getting on to item number eight is approval of denial. Um, we actually have two agenda items. One is not listed on there, but item 8A is approval or denial of the minutes and written, decision, written decisions of the August 8, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Do I have a motion on that? Moved. Moved by Mr. Dumas. Second. Second by Mr. Chasson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none. Motion passes. All right. Item 8B, there was an issue with the, regard to the May 9, 2018. Since it's not on the agenda, we need to make a motion to okay. amend the agenda yeah. to add it. All right. I need a motion. Make a motion to amend the agenda. To Sir. take it by Mr. Dumas, second by Mr. Furman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any in opposition? Hearing none. The motion passes. So um, the May 9th agenda or the meeting minutes. Excuse me, Mr. Fournier, can you update us on the issue with that? Yeah, on May 9th, uh, a roll call was taken on, on the vote on one of the projects that were up for consideration at that meeting. And uh, the vote was tabulated correctly, but it was um, misinterpreted on the minutes. So we're adding a correction to the minutes okay. on this. Do we have a motion to amend the minutes to reflect accurately the um, the, so moved. the way the vote tabulated. Moved second. by Mr. Dumas, second by Mr. Bishop. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, the motion passes. All right, moving on to the consent agenda. <coughs> Item number 9A uh, is an affidavit of mortgage declaration for the Philip and Sheila Lind, lot 7A. That's at 43264 Moody Dixon Road in Prairieville. Item 9B is an affidavit of mortgage declaration for Joe D. Mullins, Jr., Lots A and B at 41146 Busy Needles Road in Gonzales. Item 9C is an affidavit of mortgage declaration for Conrad M. and Angela T. Stanga for lots 3B4 at 41154 Sierra Lane in Gonzales. Item 9D is affidavit of mortgage declaration for Larry C. Ford Jr., lots 7B1 and 7B2, 13432 LeBlanc Road in Gonzales. Item 9E is a final plat approval for Lakeside Terrace by Quality Engineering and Surveying in Council District 5. And Item 9F is a final plat approval for Stony Point Estates first filing from MR, MR Engineering and Surveying LLC in Council District 3. Do I have a motion on motion. the consent agenda by it, Mr. Shexner? I got a question. A question by Mr. Chasson. I see that the two final plats have recommendations of approvals with conditions and, and the second one is a condition that no certificates of occupancy issued until the roadway is repaired yes. i don't think can we approve that without with conditions if we just do a consent agenda there's no way to put the conditions i think on the it. um and staff can correct me but that was a uh deal worked out there was some issues with the entrance and the developer is okay with yeah. the condition that the co's not be issued until the roadway is worked out the entrance correct. roadway is that correct that's correct if you'd like to pull that from the consent agenda we can discuss it and then you can vote on it separately because okay. we can't put the condition on it if it's on the consent agenda right i There's believe the roads yeah i mean resolved. as long as the yeah. road the road has been corrected all right mm -hmm. when they did the initial okay. testing on that first right. portion of the road the road failed the parish's testing standards. 
they have gone in and recored that, and apparently there was some uh, fly ash in the, in the cement mixture, and that has cured to the point where it has met the parish's standards. So it so it doesn't so need the condition we're, anymore. We're okay with it, and we don't need that condition right okay. now. Okay. Okay. Right. But but Aaron, just for future knowledge. If there is a condition that's put on by staff when y'all approve the consent agenda, y'all are approving it with those conditions. Okay. So does that answer your question? Yes. All right. So the motion by Mr. Sheck Snyder, second. Second, second. By Mr. Furman, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition here? None. Motion passes. Moving on to item number 10, a public hearing to approve or deny the following family partitions. Item number 10A is a Donald Daigle property, lots B1 through B6. Quality Engineering and Surveying, LLC. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, we're here representing Mr. Daigle to have a family partition. This is all lots going to his children. And uh, we're just asking for approval tonight. Staff? Yes, it, it meets the code. They've addressed the, the issues. All right. We'll go ahead and open a public hearing. Ms. Stacy, has anyone signed up to speak on this issue? No. All right, we will close the public hearing. If you are here to speak on any matter on the agenda, please uh, get a card at the podium and sign up to speak so we know that you're here to speak. Uh, we'll close the public hearing on that. Do I have questions, comments, and or a motion from the commission? How, how, how narrow or how wide is that little sliver of land connecting all of the track B1s? It is 20 feet. And that is, that is Mr. Donnie Dago. He's retaining that all for his. He's just given those pieces for his kids, and that was a way to keep all of B1 as one track. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. All right, I got a motion to approve by Mr. Furman. Second. Second by Mr. Sheck Snyder. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any in opposition? Hearing none. Motion passes. <clears throat> Item number 10B is the Larry B. Ford property, lot 7B1A, 7B1B, 7B2A, and 7B2B by W.J. Quitmont Surveyors. Mr. Quitmont. Good evening. I'll try and talk in the microphone. Is that better? There's very few people have told me they can't hear me, so I'll do my best to speak. All right, well, I'll, I'll get a lean close to the microphone for y'all. Mr. Quitmont. Good evening. Um, Clint Quitmont representing WJ Quitmont Surveyors, Earls and Associates. Um, all uh, comments have been addressed, most were labeling issues. Staff? Yes, that cor that's correct. It meets the codes and knives have been addressed. All right, we'll go ahead and open a public hearing on this. Ms. Stacy, has anyone signed up to speak on this matter? Yes. Um, Ray Decaro. Mr. Decaro, come forward, please. And for those of you that are here to speak, please limit your comments to three minutes. We have a long agenda tonight, so uh, there is a clock in front of me and one on the podium, so you'll see how much time you have. Yes, sir. I disapprove of the subdivision of property until there is proper water drainage planned done by a third-party engineering firm or professional experts in this field. My home and property is located 357 feet north of Lot 7B. I've been at this residence for 18 years and have water, re water issues on a regular basis. Highway 621 gets water on the road. Core accidents are flooded. Water stays on our land days at a time. The north end of the Bone Road drains into a small ditch <coughs> going east of Roddy Road, which is a natural ridge. Water does not flow uphill. When this small ditch is topped with water, it drains to my property, then eventually crosses on Highway 621 and flows north parallel of Morton Moran Road. The culverts under Highway 621 are not big enough to hold the volume of water that LeBlanc Road and Lot 7B is putting on us right now before these lots are all subdivided. <coughs> Lot 7B has appears already have altered their land to drain into a small ditch on the south end of Ackland Burke's property and Gina Bay's property. Water does not flow uphill. When the small ditch is topped, the water flow is not equally distributed among properties but focused on a direct path for Gina Bay's property and my property. If lot, B, if lot 7B was to build lots to a higher elevation, a drainage, a drainage plan must be flawless. We are supposed to do, well, I mean, what are we supposed to do as homeowners? What is our protection against the water coming from LeBlanc Road and lot 7B at this present time? What are we supposed to do as homeowners when massive amounts of water stays on your land, sometimes days at a time, and then 
we build more. So who's responsible? Do we build dike walls, block the water out, flood Highway 621? Thank you for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Decoro. Has anyone else signed up to speak? Gina Bay. Ms. Bay? <clears throat> um, my property butts up against uh, Mr. LeBlanc's property. And as RJ was saying, uh, Ray Joe was saying, we get the bulk of the water. I have a little over two acres right there. And when it rains for about three hours, I have no property. It's completely filled with water. I have called the parish numerous times in the 20 years that I have lived there. Their solution is to come and build a slough through the middle of my property. That's not a solution. And that's not going to help the water that is on my property. This is my property when a three-hour rain. This is ridiculous. And to want to build additional houses behind me, I can't support that until we have a drainage in place to, to resolve this. I have pictures of my property from the road, everything is, is just full of water. And this is a three hour rain. This should not happen. <clears throat> and what I'm told is I'm the low lying lot. Well, if you keep building up around me, I'm going to continue to be the low lying lot. I just brought in 30 loads of dirt to put a double wide so that I didn't have to walk in water when I get out of my house. That is ridiculous. I have water that sits in my yard for three weeks at a time when it rains this bad. You can't cut grass. You wind up having to uh, get the tractor out and bush hog it. You know, we have a problem and it needs to be resolved before we build anything else behind us. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Joyce Fontenot. <coughs> <coughs> I'm a Dirk Fairchild. I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Joyce Fondo. She's my mother-in-law, <clears throat> and we live on uh, Roddy Road. And we uh, this this property is going to be backing up to our backyards. Uh, Mr. Ford, we had a ditch back there in the backyard, right behind our property, and he has filled that ditch in and put uh, drainage pipe in there. Um, and now our backyards do not drain into the ditch that was there before. Um, so we have no drainage in the backyard because of this uh, <coughs> new uh, drainage system that he put in back there. So we need to uh, obviously get this uh, drainage system fixed. Um, the other thing is, I think from what he told me, that's going to be a new sewage line where his sewage is going to tie into those uh, into that uh, drainage pipe. And it's going to drain into a side ditch on uh, Miss Joyce's, my mother-in-law's uh, uh, side of her yard. So we are definitely in opposition to uh, to this thing going forward uh, until we get some type of drainage uh, issue fixed in our backyards, and to make sure that uh, that there's no sewage that's going to be draining in a ditch right on the side of her yard. Also, we would ask if there, if this thing does go through, which we hope it don't right now, if there's some type of privacy fence that can be put up to where we're not seeing, you know, all of the uh, the new uh, or the, the development that's going to be going on back there. That's what we're asking for. Thanks. Thank you, sir. That's it. That's it. All right, we'll go ahead and. Uh, close the public hearing on this. Mr. Quitman, do you want to address those issues that these people have brought up? Sure, absolutely. <clears throat> Other than some of the modification that was made on the ditch, um, there's no elevation changes. This is a area that has flooding issues without anything happening. These are family partition lots, one acre in size, which is three times the required zoning. If you look at the adjacent lots around there, though those lots are smaller. Well, most, I mean, say all, most are smaller, especially in width and size than the lots that are being asked for. I have looked at Roddy and 621 in these areas. Uh, the drainage is horrible. Absolutely. I agree wholeheartedly. And, and the drainage department should jump right on it and fix y'all's issues. I cannot agree more. 
It is horrible. Culverts are filled up to the top, three quarters of the culverts. So you got 25% of the capacity. Uh, these ditches are not maintained. Um, yeah, they need they need some improvement. But to say that you cannot subdivide any properties in this general area because they have bad this is all over Central Parish. Mm -hmm. This is not just to this area. This is everywhere. Um, so yeah, that problem exists. It has nothing to do with the division of creating acre lots out of three times the zoning requirement. Uh, as far as the sewer, the health department will determine exactly where the sewers run, and um, that's not up to the landowners. Other the health department. Any questions or comments or a motion by the commission? Did he create a drainage issue when he put in the pipe that Mr. Fairchild was talking about? I don't know what servitudes exist on the adjoining properties the, to where they, I mean, if he had a ditch in it and he covered it, I mean, I, it doesn't sound like these properties, uh, I don't know how the hydrology history of it, obviously it's bad, but I don't know if anybody's come out and looked at if you decide to cover your ditch, how that impacted your neighbors and was there a servitude there that prohibited it? Was the parish? Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I no, know. I mean, I, well, I mean, you're, you can't do anything that that inhibits neighbor's property from its natural drainage. And so if he filled in a ditch that was draining those yards mm -hmm. and, and now they don't drain because of action he took in filling in the ditch, I mean, that, that creates a problem. Yeah, and the, con the parish is contacted constantly about this issue. It becomes a civil issue because the parish right. can't do anything yeah. about it. Zero. And so this is a civil issue. If these causing damage to his neighbors, his neighbors can file suit, and mm -hmm. they can they can seek damages, if that's the case. But ultimately, that that doesn't affect the, the whether or not we can subdivide this. No, it does not. Okay. <clears throat> so th this is going to be family each person who gets a lot is going to be family that's correct and based on the size can they bring in fill on these lots as it exists under the current where it exists now just as much fill as any adjacent lot but since they're in flood zone X they're not required to go up any go up higher any they can just do slab houses this is actually in a, in a non flood zone okay no flood assurance is required. Doesn't mean you shouldn't get it. <laughs> no, no, I always. Well, it also doesn't mean that. that they shouldn't build up either. But correct. Um, There's no requirement to do so. Okay. Is everybody on this site going to use LeBlanc Road as for the entrance and egress for for this? Is that the planned? Yes. Okay. I'm looking at an open ditch. We're looking at. Yeah, so how? So like how is seven? Maybe I'm not seeing it. How is seven A one and seven B two B going to access the road? That's what I'm wondering. What am I missing? How how are seven A one and seven B two B going to access the road? What Do you see not? the uh, servitude, servitude of passage? passage? Okay. Okay. So access it down the forward and then forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, both of those servitudes are existing. You have a motion? Or does anyone have a motion or any other comments? I'm going to make a motion to approve. Right, we got a motion to approve by Mr. Shecksnyder. I second the motion. Second by Mr. Bishop. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, the motion passes. Oh, I'm sorry. We have one in opposition. We'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Dumas? No. No. Mr. Furman? Yes. Mr. Bishop? Yes. Mr. Chasson? No. Mr. Shecksnyder? Yes. Chair votes in favor, so the roll call is 4 to 2. 4 to 2. Am I correct? And the motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, item 9 or 10D is the Bayou Narcisse Estates second filing. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm no, jumping ahead. 10C, 
Jimmy Michelle property, lots M1 through M5. Mr. Quitmont, you're back up. Yep, all comments have been addressed. All right. Staff? Yes, it meets the codes, and all comments have been addressed. All right, Ms. Uh, Stacy, has anyone signed up to speak? We'll open a public hearing on this. No. We have no speakers on this issue. Do I have a questions, comments, and or motion by the commission? Moved to approve by Mr. Dumas. Second. Second by Mr. Shecksnyder. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion passes. Now we'll go to item 10D, by Narcissus Estates. Second filing, uh, lots 11D1, 11D1A and 11D1B, McGlynn Taylor, Inc. Ellen Jackson with McGlynn Taylor Incorporated, asking for your approval. Staff? Yes, it meets the code and all comments have been addressed. All right, we'll go ahead and open a public hearing on this. Ms. Stacy, has anyone signed up to speak? No. We have no speakers. We'll close the public hearing. Questions, comments, and or motion? Move to approve. Motion to approve by Mr. Dumas. Second. Second by Mr. Chasson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any in opposition? <clears throat> Hearing none, the motion passes. Uh, item number 10E is EH. An Anatoly Chardon property, lot 6B1 and 6B2. McLean Ellen, Taylor. Ellen Jackson again with McLean Taylor asking for your approval. And staff? Yes, it meets the code and, and uh, uh, the comments will be addressed. All right. We'll go ahead and open a public hearing on this. Ms. Stacy, has anyone signed up to speak on this? Yes. Um, we'll keep <laughs> Pearson. Ms. Pearson, come forward. Yes, ma'am. My name is Wilma Pierce, and I live on Buxton Road. As you all know, we've had a lot of flooding on Buxton Road. Anyhow, before I get started, I want to ask a question, because this uh, Charton, they have property that runs in back of the houses on Buxton Road. But in reading this, at the bottom, I'm a little confused because it talks about Highway 933 and... Uh, do I need to know anything about that? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to answer that yes, if I can. That, that was an error. The, the property was, was uh, noticed properly with the proper uh, designation uh, and advertised in the newspaper. There was a, an error as far as the location, but the remainder of the notice is for the correct property. Okay. Well, what, the reason I'm here, I've lived there, and we've had a lot of water. We've had a lot of flooding. Whenever it rains, the yards, the ditches, everything fills up really fast. And always, they've always, we've been there 18 years, and that's a lot of the neighbors have been there much longer. And they've always said that land that runs behind our property is wetland. And I've always thought with wetland, you don't build anything. And I always, I mean, everybody has said it's wetland. But... I don't know when they changed it. If they did, I, I wasn't aware of it. But if you start building to put in homes, then that means they're going to have to bring in a lot of dirt and build it up. And if they build it up, then the water will be displaced and it will not, it will run onto, you know, the property that's there. And if they keep, I, I don't understand. Bear with me. I'm 88. This is new to me to be doing this. But well, you're if, doing fantastic. Well, thank you. But if they build it up, the water is going to go somewhere else. And I'm right behind it. And goodness knows we have water there quite often. So what I'm wondering is what assurance have you put into place that the displayed water will not come out into my yard and the other neighbors' yards. I mean, have, I'm sure you, I'm sure you would have to. Do Steph something. can answer that, Mr. Fournier. Do you have something? And we can stop yeah. the clock up for okay. her. Go ahead right. while we're answering this question. I'd like to say right now that un under the um, family petition measure, we're only dividing property. Right. We're not developing it at this right. point. Um, there's no plan to actually put a house there. Eventually, there very likely will. Any type of uh, development that occurs on the property will have to meet our drainage requirements. And if there is fill that's placed on the property, it has to be displaced, you know, according to our drainage ordinance, right? So 
any type of development that will occur in it, whether it's a, uh, a house or other type of building, very likely it will be a house. That, that house will, if it's built on fill, that fill will have to be mitigated. So. I don't understand all of that. And I'm what, what, what he's saying is if they, but the law requires them to take care to make sure that they're not letting more water off that property than what is currently comes off in its natural state if they decide to build on it. If, and if they divide the land up, then they're going to build on it. You well, know, I mean, but they have to they have to get go through the permitting process with the parish. Will there to be other problem, other hearings that we could come and what I was what I wanted to find out is what engineering company is looking this over to make sure that the water will not run off? I'm sure so some engineering company will have to take care of it. That's that water. gentleman sitting in the blue shirt right there. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are the engineering review agency okay. for the parish. Our engineering review agency is here. But anytime someone submits a development plan mm -hmm. and, it, and they're going to be developing a house or something else mm -hmm. on that lot, they will have to present a set of plans to the parish. We review those plans to make sure that they meet with our requirements. Well, is it logical that they're going to go ahead and divide this and sell lots and not be permitted to build houses on it? No, ma'am, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be logical, would it? Right, right. No. That's true. No. Yeah. Well, I am hoping that before all of this goes all the way through, I'm a believer in engineers, and I think if you get with the Louisiana professional engineers that all work under, they all have a, you know, a number. They're all professional. Uh, they're, they're licensed. That's the word I was trying to I would like for somebody like that with plenty of knowledge. I'm, I'm not saying you all don't have knowledge. Don't get me wrong. But if, if you get somebody that really, really knows what's going on, I think it would be much better for the people that's lived there all this time. I mean, we've had sand brought to our houses time and time and time again. And of course, we needed it real bad two years ago and one other time. So I just really, I just really don't want to see water all, you know, me have to move out again because my house is flooding again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just making a complaint for that reason. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank Anything you. else I need to say or do? <laughs> can, I, can I ask I you a question? Okay. Thank you, sir. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh -huh. Have you actually seen the map that's being proposed, this, no, the division? I All I know is I got this in the mail, and, uh, and two or three of the people that live out there, they said, well, you know, they're going to build a subdivision. Well, so oh, far, no, it's I'm, not a I'm the only one that's not a subdivision. This isn't a subdivision. It's a family partition into two lots that the owner wants to donate one to a, a family member and keep one for himself. That's why I asked. I think if, if you get maybe after the meeting or something, or if now we put it up on the screen so you can see what they're actually doing, because my guess is it's a fairly large piece of land, so you're probably thinking well, they're going to put a I've lot of houses. I've always been told it's but, narrow. Right. That, you know, but mm -hmm. it goes a long distance. But all they're right. doing is splitting it up into two pieces, uh -huh. so it's not a, a... They couldn't put 30 houses, but they could put two. Dale, come look at this. Right. This is my neighbor, too. <laughs> this, this, let me show you this, how it goes already. This is the property that exists right now. Mm -hmm. It's and pronounced shot do But in many ways, it used to be a silk farm place where right they had silk farms underneath. Mm -hmm. In the front. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Right up against the rubble. It's right across from the house. Oh, it's, it's just one. It, okay. No, well, well that it's, right, okay. it's right there. That's where it is. It would just be charged as over here. Then they will not be. They're not going to do the whole thing. They're not going to do the whole thing. Well, you see, I live at the far end, and that's yeah. where the water comes. Oh, yeah. Y'all yeah. yeah. yeah, all just, know where the water comes. Okay. One. That's it, though. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you, it. Thank, Thank you for coming up. Miss Stacy, is anyone else signed up to speak? Dale Bowman. Mr. Bowman. Dale Bowman. Did he leave? Going once? Going twice? Anyone else, Miss Stacy? No. All right, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Any questions, comments? Ms. Jackson, would you like to address any of those issues? Okay. And or a motion by the commission? Move to approve. 
Motion to approve by Mr. Dumas, second by Mr. Sheck Snyder. All in favor? Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, the motion passes. Um, finally, on item agenda 10 is the Alfred Wayne Moore property, lots F1 through F9 and lot F10. McGlynn Taylor, Ms. Jackson. Ellen Jackson again with McGlynn Taylor Incorporated asking for your approval. Staff? Yes, the project meets the code and the comments have been addressed. All right, we'll go ahead and open a pub hearing on this issue. Ms. Uh, Stacy, has anyone signed up to no. speak? We'll close the public hearing. Questions, comments, and or a motion by the commission. Move to approve. Moved to approve by Mr. Furman, second by Mr. Dumas. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion passes. All right, item 11 on the agenda is the public hearing to approve or deny the following preliminary plats. Item 10A is the Highland Trace subdivision. Ms. Jackson with McGlynn Tail, are you up on this one? No. McGlynn Tail, oh. Yep. We have someone else. Good evening. I'm Ross Berthelot with Germany Land Development, and we are proposing a development uh, of a new subdivision called Highland Trace off of Bro Road. It would be 60 lots. Uh, we've met with the planning staff, and we believe we've fulfilled all the criteria and so we're asking for your approval if you have any questions I have my traffic and my drainage engineer here to help answer them Steph <laughs> yes comments have been addressed if you have anything specifically with regards to drainage or traffic the uh, Charlotte Road the engineering review agency can answer those questions right. we'll go ahead and open a public hearing on this Miss Stacy Jeff Pettit Mr. Pettit Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Pettit. Uh, uh, I've got a couple of questions here. Our new uh, traffic impact analysis requires that the landowner, developer, and or engineering representative, the applicant, must provide an engineering study to document the anticipated impact of the proposed development on the existing transportation network. Now, see in the traffic study that was um, um, in the packet on the parish's website that um, roundabouts were included in there to bring the intersections in the traffic study up to a level D or above. And uh, I've got to point out, I'm sure everybody knows, the roundabouts have not been built. And my point being, my point being, we've all seen projects that have been planned and even funded. We've seen projects modified, projects delayed, and projects canceled. So how, how, according to what we have now, which is codified in statute, that we're supposed to look at the um, existing transportation grid, how can we account or give credit for something that's not been built yet? Yes, it's planned. Yes, it's needed. But it's not built yet. That's one item. The second thing is, is that in the staff comments to um, at the, uh, I guess it was held at the traffic scoping meeting, when they lay out the uh, uh, parameters for the traffic impact analysis, uh, there was a note from our ERA that the lakes at West Creek trip generations not be included in the traffic studies. but. If you look at our ordinance, and it states under what's required at traffic scoping meetings, it says incorporation of trips for other proposed developments within the study area must be included. And these were excluded. That's two reasons we're, we're going against our statute. And I don't need to hear from the ERA or our planning department. I'd rather hear from our staff attorney and get the legal opinion we're not following our ordinance that the parish council our elected representatives passed so why are we here with this preliminary plat tonight we're not following our statute from what i see thank you miss stacy anyone else kimberly christie miss christie
Hello, my name is Kim Christie. I live in Prairieville, District 7. The citizens of Ascension Parish have been asking for meaningful traffic impact studies, and we finally have them. My understanding is anything below a D cannot be approved. However, the administration has made a statement that the preliminary plat meets all requirements according to the Land Development Code when it does not. Is the Planning Commission going to overstep its authority again with a contingency like it did with Jamestown Crossing and authorizing a developer to modify a state highway to circumvent the law? Or like it did with Oak Grove Townhomes when the Planning Commission committed the ENA Drainage Board to complete a major drainage project? Or is the MOVE Ascension project going to expedite the road improvement in areas to support the developers? There are projects all over this parish that need completion. Is the new normal to fund those projects to support development? The standard should be to fund those projects with the greatest need to support the citizens of Ascension. The chair of this committee has repeated over and over again like a broken record that it's up to the parish council to implement the laws or to make the laws. The parish council has done so. It's now in the hands of the planning commission to follow the law as it is written. We the citizens of Ascension Parish expect more of the Planning Commission. Do what's right for the citizens. Thank you, Ms. Christie. Joe Robert. Mr. Robert. How's everyone doing tonight? Joel Robert, 7217 Highway 44. Um, I'm against this. I'm against approving the plat. And I'm going to tell you, I'm a businessman. I make, currently make my living as a businessman, bringing business into the city, the parish, and elsewhere, and I'm really good at it, actually. You know, I mean, I do, uh, I do fine with it. With that said, as a businessman, I expect to follow so certain guidelines, certain requirements, certain things that you have to do right. I do things right. What it says in this ratified document, which, AKA law, <clears throat> in the case where the existing level of service is below D, the required mitigating improvements shall impo improve the LOS to D or better. Okay, this is what we're gonna make our decision on. And honestly, I think y'all will make the right decision. I do, I, I mean, I have 100% faith in you because it's right here, it, it's spelled out in front of us. Am I saying we don't want this development? I'm not saying that. I'm saying I want this development to meet the guidelines. Why do we have this? We ratified this, or it says on here, revised May 21st, 2018. These are the first subdivisions that have been reviewed and up for a meeting since then. Okay, the reason that we did this, I believe we all know, the reason we did this is because developers have been taking advantage of our parish for a long time. Um, a commodity. Commodities, they, they work. You have a, a high commodity, you're going to make money. Your property values are high. Low commodity, the same thing. It's, it's the difference between a commodity and a necessity. A commodity is what we are right now, a very hot commodity in Louisiana. Very much so. You can talk to any realtors. You can talk to anyone in the industry. Um, that's because of our location. It's because of the Mississippi River, I-10. Many, many reasons. People want to build here. Property value is some of the highest in the state here. That will not continue if we can't provide proper infrastructure for our community. Y'all's job, you're here to represent us as a people. And my job as a people is to hold y'all responsible and accountable for the decisions you make. And take the side of the, of the people, of the parish. This, if this, if y'all ratify this, or if y'all actually pass this or approve this, why did we even put this into into law? The first one we're gonna we're gonna 
I don't know. It just compromised the first one. It wouldn't make sense. So, so I guess thank y'all for listening to me and thank y'all for voting the right way and denying this right now because they clearly do not meet the standards. And whether they're going to do a roundabout in the future, they're going to do a red light in the future, that's great. But it clearly says that these standards have to be met beforehand, which it should be because as a citizen, it's, it should be outrageous, and it's not because I live here and I know how it is, but it should be outrageous that this intersection is an F, number one. That should just be ridiculous because it is. We should have an improved way of life over here with all the economy, all the property value, all the want to come here. But on top of that, now we want to develop on top of it. Why? It's not good enough right now for the, for the current residents. So we don't approve something and make it worse. Uh, Joel Robert, like I said, and I'm here tonight to thank y'all for doing the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Thank you. That's it. All right, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing on this. Um, yes. <laughs> I'd like to uh, <clears throat> call up uh, our traffic engineer, Ellen, at uh, Neil Schaefer, if she would, just to come kind of help address some of these concerns. They're all three about traffic. Uh, but I'd also like to just ask Eric and Sean, are we, have we not complied with all of the new traffic study requirements? I know I had to spend twice as much as I used to spend on the traffic study. And we had to write it twice because we got caught in between this transition mm -hmm. between the old study and the new study. And also what some of the constituents, you know, fail to realize is that we're now requiring, you know, $2,500 a lot on up for traffic impact fees uh, to help situations, you know, that are currently un underserved with traffic. But I don't want to speak, uh, you know, yeah. over my head, so I'd like to have Ellen come up. And then if you would, can you let us know if we've circumvented anything? Thank you. Good evening. I'm Ellen Howard with Neil Schaefer. I did the traffic studies for um, both of these subdivisions. Um, in regards to, let's see which comment, the comment that um, the, tra the sub other subdivisions were not included in the studies, uh, that's actually, it was actually for the lakes at West Creek, comment number three. Um, let's see, it actually, Highland Trace was included in the existing conditions. Oh, no, sorry, was not included in the existing conditions. Uh, that's what the comment was saying. That's what the address was saying. Uh, there were actually nine scenarios for the intersection of Germany Road at Bro Road, and these developments were all included in several of these scenarios. Mm -hmm. So they were included. It just wasn't included in existing conditions. That's all that comment was saying. And then um, if roundabouts are not constructed, then a signal is actually recommended to mitigate the um, development's impacts. So... I think that addresses the co concerns there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have any other questions? Who's constructing the roundabout, or if it's not constructed, putting in the traffic signal? The parishes um, will be constructing the roundabout through contract. And, it, and it, my understanding is it's going through the contractual works right now, and, and the funds have been allocated for it. Yes, the, um, the roundabout at Germany and Bro Road is actually in final design to be completed in November of 2018. These roundabouts are funded, aren't they? They are funded projects? Yes, they are. Okay, but what happens if for some <coughs> fiat of government action, which we've never heard this before, it becomes unfunded or put on a back burner and that roundabout never gets built? Then then in order to make the level of service uh, appropriate for the project a, a traffic signal would be it and and who would put yeah. that in the contract uh, either the parish or the state or not according to what it says uh, yeah, it says that the contractor is responsible for paying for that in in this huh answer that well this is the state road right uh germany no it shouldn't be no not right there this is right. a parish road what about Crossy road la 920 bro it's, it's bro, so it should be parish. Okay, so if they're all parish road, it's up to the parish to put a uh, traffic light? 
So no permit from the state to a traffic light there? Yes, you'll need a permit from DOTD to put a signal or modified intersection unless it is their intersection. Okay. And, and under the new policy, they can't issue any occupancy permits until either the roundabout is built or they install the light at their cost under the policy, correct? Let, let me tell let me tell me all that. Let me read y'all what the law says on it, and then I think what what you guys need to do as a planning commission, because I think this is on this is where it comes into play. Um, and I'm gonna start where it says, in case where the existing level of service is below D, the required mitigating improvement shall improve the level of service to D or better. And then it goes on to list the different kind of contingencies that you can require to reduce the traffic-related impacts, and there's a whole listing of them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's on you as the planning commission to put those contingencies in place if it doesn't meet the requirements. I don't know how to interpret this. I would defer to Sean. Well, but well, under that, but under the list, it says applicants will be responsible for the cost and implementation of identified improvements to mitigate the traffic impact yeah, correct. of their I said, development. What I'm telling you is I think it's you guys' responsibility to put those conditions Right. Now. So let me let me un I want to make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying correctly, Cody, because we were just criticized for putting um, contingents to improve roadways up to standard before any construction could begin on this. So the law allows us to put contingencies to make the traffic mitigation up to code before any construction begins or the certificate of occupancy CEO. is ordered. If you're talking about Jamestown, that's a different issue. That wasn't. A I, I know, issue. I know, yeah. I know. But I, I'm I'm asking about the contingencies specifically on this, and I get that that's well, a different look, issue. Well, I'll go on further to read it. It does say an applicant in coordination with DPD or their designee may modify the development proposal to reduce traffic-related impacts. Modifications to applications for projects may include, but shall not be limited to, dedication of additional right-of-way, mm -hmm. rerouting of traffic at proposed access points traffic signal timing or phasing adjustments, restriping or reconfiguration of an intersection, construction of additional lanes, installation of a roundabout, installation of a signal, providing funding for infrastructure improvements, any other recommendations by the DPD upon review. Applicants will be responsible for the cost and implementation of identified improvements to mitigate the traffic of their proposed development unless funding can be provided through a grant mechanism. Is the, uh, is the initiative through the parish a grant initiative? No. no, I'm not sure the funding source on the roundabout. It's move. It's move. It's, it's move. move, ascension. Ascension. move ascension. So, right. So, so Matt, it then goes on to say, if any traffic mitigation is part of an approved traffic impact analysis, all approved traffic improvements must be implemented prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Correct. Okay. So even though he can construct, he can't. Nobody's going to be living there in, impacting traffic without until these improvements are made. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. But you guys got to identify yes, what improvements are necessary. But their traffic study has already said that. They've basically said that if the no, roundabout. I think what he's saying is we need to make them as conditions oh, we have to, okay. of approval. Yeah, because their roundabout shows that they will improve it to an A. And in their traffic study, they're actually saying in the disclusion of a roundabout, they will be responsible for putting a traffic, excuse me, a traffic signal, which would then, I think, bring it still to a B, which is all within their line. I just so, want to make sure, because this is the yeah. first time we're dealing with this right. beast, that we're going to do it the proper way um, and, and make sure we're, we're, we're following what the law states. So. The, the question I have for, for, for them is, is just flat out, do you, are you understanding that you will not be issued a certificate of occupancy until these improvements are done? Because that's going to hold up everything for you. You're not going to make a dime and you're going to put all this stuff in there. And so we don't want y'all to come back and say, well, we got to sell houses, but we don't have the improvements well, yet. Well, let me be clear. First of all, all this stuff was planned before we even owned the property. Mm -hmm. We have nothing to do with the roundabout. We, there's a turn lane on airline in Germany that's also planned. There's a turn lane on Germany at 44 that's also planned, or some improvements there that's mm -hmm. also planned. Okay. All that was on the books. So we come in to do our study. I believe we were a C currently. Without any improvements, if you add these 60 lots, it goes to a D. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Negative. There's no Fs. No. Depends on what approach. South, southbound. No. Southbound, you're at F the whole way. 929 non, non at Bro, southbound is an F. Uh, Germany at Bro, southbound is an F. Okay, southbound on Bro. 
Germany at Bro southbound approach is an F. Okay, but we're we're north of that. But you're required to take that into consideration okay, under the well, new traffic. Okay, well, no, agree, but but we'll be okay, turning into the subdivision that. before then, anyways. But regardless, yeah. my, my point is that you know the the we had to go back and take into account not only the the proposed roundabout, which is already funded, mm -hmm. okay, and all the other improvements at Airline and 44, but also the school. Mm -hmm. Also, the second filing of that Silver Oak subdivision down the street. Absolutely correct. Okay, so so we did all that. Sean, can uh, you confirm with the policy? Can you confirm that because there was an allegation that not all the planned development was considered? I, I believe that Mr. Right. Berthlot's engineer said that it was. It was just okay. there was a different notation. Can you confirm or not confirm that all planned development was considered in the traffic impact yes. analysis? The traffic policy. His statement is you got to count for plan developments, and plan developments are all projects that have uh, for which a traffic impact study has been submitted or approved. Okay, so a school traffic study has not been submitted or approved. They're still working on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's not included. Jeremy Oaks right. was included in this traffic study. Now all the houses are there, but they counted for the future trips. Um, Silver, Silver Oaks, Silver Lakes, that other sort of that was accounted for. Mm -hmm. Everything over at the um, route, what used to be route, what is Rouse's, LeBlanc's, all that shopping center, that's already counted for in the base, like right. when you count cars a day. Those things are existing, they're already generating the traffic. So they did account for those. The statement that I had a review comment telling the applicants not to account for two subdivisions in the existing condition. Remember, the existing condition establishes a baseline. So if you, I'm not saying sneak like they were trying to do something, it was just, you add in another development to the base, your relative difference when you add the other one on top of it is much sort of, it's not, in my opinion, I just want an extra scenario in case we got to this discussion at mm -hmm. the meeting. What if one was approved and not the other? Right. What is the relative difference? What would it be if both were approved? What is the relative difference to existing condition? That's why we, they went through probably eight, nine different scenarios mm -hmm. that we've never had to do before in the previous traffic study policies, plus mm -hmm. with a roundabout and without a roundabout. With one subdivision, just signals, and both of the signals, we went through all those scenarios. So the comment was, my opinion, to benefit the parish, make sure not both subdivisions aren't included in an existing conditions. I want it to be in a future condition. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the comment. The, um, I forgot the other one. Um, the whole thing about, Cody's here to read, you know, the traffic policy to you all, but there are statements in here in the traffic policies to the proposed development, which is subject to a TA policy, may be disapproved, and it has a couple of conditions. One is you just think it overburden existing roadway, the level of service worse than it be. There's a lot of may. I don't see anything, my opinion, but that's the attorney that says, if it's worse than a D, you shall disapprove a project. There's a lot of the new change with the traffic policy now set the bar of what do we call bad or overburden the parish. We said worse than a D, which is consistent with a lot of places. So if it's worse than a D, now we have a couple of options. You approve it, a partial subdivision, put contingencies on it, you make them set aside funding in event something doesn't come on board. You have a whole lot more options now. But, mm -hmm. but it does say that they will be required for the cost and implementation to mitigate the impact. Mitigate. That's a, right, so because it's two different issues. One is right. the impact study is more stringent now, you have to do more. And then the second issue is if it shows certain impacts, you're not required to deny the subdivision, you can still approve it, but they must, as I'm interpreting it and mm -hmm. reading it, because it says, says will be and shall, they have to bring the level of service up to a certain minimal standard, which in this case I believe is a D, and that they're re required to bear the impact of it unless you're taking in planned conditions such as the roundabout, which is already planned for, but under the, under the way the imp policy is written, if you're going to rely on the roundabout, then you can't issue any occupancy certificates until the roundabout is constructed. That's, or that's, the turn signal. Or the turn signal is installed, which again, according to this, would be at their cost, at least as the, as the as policy. As the turn signal goes, if, the, if yeah. the planned 
Yeah, I, I think that's. Yeah. Am, am I right? I mean, is are we all in, the, or does somebody disagree with my interpretation of that? No, so I, I feel that way, and that's why I just wanted to bring it up to to y'all as the developer is. This is this is a huge thing. I mean, let's just say the roundabout, yeah, it's funded and everything, but let's say it takes three years for it to finally get constructed. Well, you can probably have that subdivision ready in a year and a half or two. You can't sell a single house. Unless and, I'm close to a single house. Unless I put a turn signal. Well, yeah, and then, yeah. then you're going to have to go through all of that, and then you're going to have to put a turn signal and at your expense and, and everything like that. So where does all the traffic impact fee go to then? Your traffic impact fee goes to that zone of area. So, and that's, that's a pool of money that then is dedicated towards stuff like move ascension or anything like that. But that's yeah, that goes that towards zone. other roundabouts that may come up or road improvements right. or whatever else. It's not it's, just specific and, to And your if you area. have to build the traffic, if you have to build the traffic signal in order to move forward, you could possibly approach the parish and say, can I get credit for those impact fees? Right, and that's, that's, right. that's, that's between you saying. and the yeah. council. Well, that's where I was going with this. If, if that, realistically, here's the timeline. We would get approval tonight, have to do construction plans, get all that approved, mm -hmm. start construction in the late, early spring. It'll be a year, year and a half. Then houses take another six months. You're talking two years, you mm -hmm. know, probably December 2020, I guess. It I, I completely agree, and that's why I'm bringing it up to you, is so that's going to be on y'all. How does that fall in line with the improvements, uh, with the roundabout timeline? Do y'all have any... Yeah, I got, we got some information from project managers for the move ascension and, for example, Germany Road and um, Bro Road Roundabout. Um, I mean, because, you know, they're estimating um, construction can start sometime in fall 2019, take about three mon months to build. It could be fall 2019, middle 2020, late 2020, which sounds like you were talking about a year and a half, two year mm -hmm. timeline, of when those would be complete, and that's for a roundabout. Same thing for the Bro Road AP29 roundabout. Um, a Germany Road safety widening, um, that's, that's a, like a 2024 mm -hmm. type deal, but nothing in their analysis indicated at this time that it would be required widening as a part right. of what they saw was more of, which is most um, transportation improvement programs are in handling choke points, intersections first, get those operational, then if funding comes and if you need it, then you start looking at widening mm -hmm. roadways. That's why these intersections are failing first. Mm -hmm in this traffic analysis for it before a road. Well, and I, th I think the proposal before us is it's either going to be the roundabout or the traffic light, which the roundabout sounds like it's all funded and ready to go, but Highway 42 should have been four lanes by now, right. which if yeah. you drive out there, it's not. So and, and there's no guarantee. Oh, I'm saying, and I think uh, Mr. Shexner said this, there's no guarantee that that roundabout's going to be there when you're ready to get your certificate of occupancy. And at that point, you're going to have to figure out a way to get a light there or do something because right. that's which might delay you and which cost might you delay a you a little bit money. more. And I think yeah. what he's saying is that's the condition that's been recommended on this, um, which if it gets approved, we'll probably have that condition attached to it. And we've spoken to Councilman Johnson about this, both of these projects on this in his district, and uh, so I've. I have a comfortable relationship with him too that I feel like we could be able to work something out. I don't I don't mind that being in contingency. Um, I mean, you got to do what you got to do, but all signs point to the roundabout being funded and mm -hmm. being completed around that time that right. the first homes would be delivered. Right. I just want to point out based on the analysis, the roundabout is a much more I would say more than just offsets their development. It's built for a whole lot more growth. Mm -hmm. You can see some of these I was looking at the seconds and delay versus oh, an AM peak hour for with a roundabout versus a signal. Um, the delays, like for example, West Brown approach with a signal is 13 seconds, which is a B, but with a roundabout, it's an A. Mm -hmm. So I think their analysis is more of what's needed to off to mitigate their impacts, which I think is one of the key parts of the, the study. And that was a signal. But the roundabout is a much bigger, more than just about their project. It's right now and, and for future traffic. Right, but, so. and, but if the roundabout is there, by the time they're ready to oh, issue yeah. occupancy permits, then they don't, they don't need, need to put the yeah, signal. Uh, in, no, in, yeah, I, I mean, they're on the right path. I just didn't, didn't want people to think right. that a, a, this signal proposed improvement is the same exact benefit. No, 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 no and we, yeah, we recognize no. it's and, not, yeah, it's yeah. just. And the requirement is not just to offset their impact anymore. It's if you're below a D, they have to bring it up to a D. Right. So if it's an F and you're making it a worse F, like the, the intersection at, the southbound approach on 929 at Bro, you know, if they were mitigating it, they would have to, under the new code, bring it up to a D. 
you know, they, they don't have to go all the way to the A like the roundabout does, but they at least have to bring it to a D. That's 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 what the requirement. Right. It's yeah. it's. I think we I think we all got it. So yeah. if there's any other questions or comments or emotions. and then, uh, well, I again, think this uh, is this is all a, a, a timing issue. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make a motion to um, approve uh, consistent with your ordinance uh, prohibiting any issuance of any. Uh, certificate of occupancies on this development until such time as either the roundabout are completed and operational or there's a traffic light at these intersections that has been constructed and put in, into operation in, and incorporated into the uh, traffic signal system of the parish. We have a, a motion comment. by Mr. Dumas, a second by yeah. Mr. Furman. May I make a comment? Mr. Dumas, would you possibly include any of the other approved um, modifications that that they listed on on our ordinance? Because it's you know it does say stuff like the uh, the additional lanes. I mean, so anything else that would include that to get it up to the the proper level of service? But those are the two that are applied to this project. Uh, okay. There's no widening that's required according to the CSRS. Okay. So, which, but you know, pick pick the ones that are fine. Okay. Well, we have a motion and a second on the on the table. So I will call all in favor. Aye. 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 Any in opposition? Hearing none, the motion passes uh, as stated. Thank y'all. All right. Item number 11B is uh, Lake at West Creek, McLean Taylor. Mr. Berthelot, this is you again. Yes. This is a second tract of land that we purchased from the same heirs. Um, so we're bringing them to you at the same time but this is a proposed subdivision on Germany Road it's 105 lots it would tie into High Creek Avenue which is a road in the existing West Creek Estates subdivision to the east of this property um, a lot of the traffic discussion we just had will apply to this subdivision as well it's not that far down the street from the previous one that was approved and I believe we have a staff recommendation to approve. If you have any questions, again, I'm here along with my engineers to answer. Staff? Yes, uh, it meets the code. All comments have been addressed. If you have any specific questions about traffic and drains, you can address them to the ERA. And the, uh, the traffic, is, are we talking about the same roundabouts that mm -hmm. for this as the last one? Um, more specific, this due to the location is the... Uh, the Germany Road, Bro Road roundabout, mm -hmm. it's the most likely used intersection for this particular subdivision. And one that we haven't talked about yet was the improvements of Germany over in 44, which they're doing some turn line improvements. That is a DOTD project mm -hmm. um, that was told is going on right now. So the, uh, the other one, AP 929 Bro Road, that's not as much as the roundabout that would be part of this project's discussion. Okay. So is the turn lane, If so are we talking either roundabout or light and turn lane, or what, what, what's the, the necessary last there? project when we were, um, so this one right now, it's the main intersection is Germany on Bro Road. That's impacted. That's the one we all talked about that needs the roundabout, and if the roundabout's not in place, it needs a signal to offset their impacts. So that's, that's the one we're focused on this project. What about 44 at Germany? 44 in Germany, that is a, um, right now there's a project ongoing um, that's adding turn lanes to DOTD project. That's, so that's under construction. That's right. That's actually under construction now. Mm -hmm. Going on. We have well, the, the way area. I read this, yeah. the yeah. way I read this, you also have a right turn lane and a left turn lane in the subdivision. Yes, I, I was, my comments were specific about the off-site intersections. Okay. This project's already in the traffic study by needing a left turn lane and right turn lane to get into the, the subdivision. I mean, that's already a proposed improvement. Okay. Well, before we open to the public comment, I'd like to ask my um, engineer for drainage to come and talk about any pre-existing condition that we're aware of and I've talked to Councilman Johnson about and some of the neighbors in West Creek Estates parish is aware of it as well um, if I could get Rudy to come okay. explain kind of the current <laughs> issue and what we're proposing I think that'll probably head off a lot of comments good 
Good evening. Uh, my name is Rudy Sunko. I'm with McLean Taylor. Um, we performed the drainage impact study. The site is an existing 35-acre site, um, and the ma ma majority of it, of it drains to Black Bayou. Uh, we found through our study that there are two major uh, outfall points, one being uh, crossing Germany Road to the north through an existing 42-inch pipe, the other being to the east through West Creek, which is an uh, existing subdivision. Um, there's two points that catch water um, from our, our site. Um, one is between lot 10 and 11. The other is between lot 17 and 18. Um, we use the existing drainage impact study for the West Creek uh, development to help establish a watershed. Um, through our study, we found approximately the same amount of runoff. So we, we agreed with them. We understand how much is going there. And uh, to mitigate any post-development runoff, we're proposing to route majority of the site's post-development to a uh, proposed 2.8-acre detention pond that will create roughly 17 acre feet of storage. Um, its outfall will be between lots 10 and 11. It's an existing weir inlet. Currently, we're sheet flowing directly into that inlet. Um, under post-development conditions, we're proposing to tie into that inlet with an 18-inch pipe. From that 18-inch pipe, there's an existing 36-inch pipe that connects to their storm sewer system, which connects to their detention pond, and then ultimately to Black Bayou. Um, I think that's a quick summary. If y'all got any questions, I'll be happy to answer. We'll go ahead and open a public hearing on this. Ms. Stacy, is anyone signed up to speak? Yes. Jeff Pettit. Good evening. Uh, the same issues apply here that apply to uh, Highland Trace. Um, uh, uh, we, I just think that uh, as a parish with the uh, traffic nightmares that we're facing that uh, we need to see infrastructure driven growth and uh, let's put the infrastructure in before we put another rooftop in. Uh, once that's done then um, come and build away according to code. I've got one question about the previous one, though. I've been racking my brain in the back of the room. Uh, I can't think of another road that's uh, that's parish maintained that has a traffic light on it in the unincorporated part of the parish. So I hope. Uh, so I, I hope that uh, uh, that's not a serious consideration. Although it would help, the roundabout's the way to go, and I'd like to see the same thing for this subdivision. Let's put the roundabout in first, so we can move some traffic. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bettit. Patrick Muscarello. Good evening. I'm Patrick Muscarello. I am the HOA president for West Creek Estates, and I'm here on behalf of our neighborhood. Um, we've got a number of concerns with this development. Obviously, the traffic, biggest thing, okay? Um, and no disrespect to our engineers here in the room, but the residents that live on that street get to study the drainage and the traffic every day. All the amount of time that we sit at the lights, at the stop signs, um, we can study everything until we're blue in the face. But actually putting something in place that's going to alleviate the problems that we have before we go adding to that. You know, we've got several other developments that are already on Germany Road. Uh, the apartments down at the end, the new subdivisions. We've not seen that traffic yet. And even though I know you say that that's accounted in for into the study, you know, we've not seen that. Um, so it's, it's very frustrating day in and day out to have to fight with that traffic. <clears throat> the drainage. When our subdivision was put in over 10 years ago, that drainage study was done with that 35 acres being wooded land. If we go and take that and change that and turn that into asphalt, pavement, and lots, the runoff is going to change. Our neighborhood has the two outfalls into our pond. 
And unfortunately, that's not sufficient for our lots, for our neighborhood. When we get a heavy rain event, I know the back of my yard, I end up with several inches of water that goes up on the fence. Um, so proposing to add more water into our drainage is a bad idea. I know I'm short on time. The other thing that we do not want to have, you know, a lot of the residents moved into that neighborhood because it has no outlet. It's a nice, quiet neighborhood. Adding that connecting street into the back is going to increase the traffic in our neighborhood. We didn't sign up for that. You know, we moved in there because of how that neighborhood was put up and how it was constructed. We do not want to see additional traffic come through there. And the way this new neighborhood is laid out, there will, additional, there will definitely be additional traffic that will shortcut through our neighborhood to get out to Germany Road. So I, I just want to close and say, you know, I would really like to see us make some actual improvements to things rather than talk about things and things being funded. You know, I lived on Black Bayou Road for almost 20 years, and that turn lane and all the improvements to that intersection were proposed and funded for a long time, and it took forever for that to get through. Same thing with this roundabout. We can have all the money in the world, but if it's not actually done, we're, we're right where we are today. So uh, I'll wrap it up. We do not want to see this go through in the way that it is. We'd like to see those changes addressed. Thank you, sir. Eva Harlow. Hello, my name is Eva Harlow, and I just want to reiterate what he said. Uh, I'm in that subdivision, and traveling on Germany Road, unless you travel when people are not getting off from work or coming home or going to school, we're about to have a school up the street. We're about to have 14 apartments being built up the street by Germany Oaks or whatever, but it's too much for us. You can't get out of the subdivision. A lot of people complain. It, to get here for a 6 o'clock meeting, we missed three lights right there at Germany Road and 44. It's just too much. What are you going to do to help us? We built our home there because it was a small community. And I'd like it to stay that way. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Lewis Harlow. Okay. Catherine Page. Hi, I'm Catherine Page. I live in um, West Creek subdivision. Patrick said it all. I just have a question. What is going to be the value of the homes that you build? I'm not asking about size. I'm asking about resale value. Okay, well, what are you going to sell them for? So you're not going to build it. You're not building houses. Okay, and as I understand it, the sewer, the the drainage is going to go through pipes that go through our subdivision. Did I understand that correctly? No, ma'am. Okay. Not exactly. Yeah. Is, that, is that how it is? You did, some you, of it, yeah. Yes. Oh, some of the affluent, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're talking about storm water. Right. Storm, storm water does. Rain will go into detention ponds that will be connected by that pipes. That are existing. That will connect to existing pipes in the lakes, uh, I mean, the West okay, Creek Okay, so estates. you're going to build yes, a pond, and then that water is going to go through existing pipes and into Black Bayou? <laughs> What 
Could you say that in a different way? I didn't understand that. There won't be more water coming from our property. Ma'am, what, he, what he's trying to say, what the law requires, is however that land drains right now. Who's talking? I'm, I'm up here. Up oh, here. Okay. okay. <laughs> however the land drains right now at what, what the rate is currently in its natural state, after it's developed, it has to drain at that same rate. So they have to hold water on their property and drain it off at the same rate that it's currently draining off naturally. That's what the law requires. Cool. So if it rains in 10 inches in an hour, as now, just yeah. so the way the water would drain out of my subdivision now is exactly the way it would drain out with your subdivision there? We're hoping to improve it with that modification of that culvert that came out. Yeah, they, they have to drain it at the same rate. Um, okay. If they can make it better, that's that's what, great. But now, where is this culvert going to drain into? <clears throat> it already drains into the pond. Okay, so it'll make it fuller than it. It's it's not going. They they have to hold that water on their property, on the current property. They have to hold it and drain it off at the same rate. So it's not going to be increasing the flow that comes off that property now. That's what the law requires. That's why uh, Mr. Chereau is here to make sure that that drainage study that they propose is doing exactly what the law requires okay, them to I do. Okay, I just have one more question. Did sure. I understand you're going to put in a turn lane into your subdivision? Yeah, we can help some of the concerns about uh, right. in and out. Yeah, we can use that turn lane if we stay connected. If the parish requires connectivity, we don't care if we have connectivity if we don't or not. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the turning lane on turn Germany. Lane. Who are in Germany. That's what I want. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Brooks Page is against, but he does not want to speak. Okay. We, we will note the uh, the opposition by Mr. Page. Kimberly Christie. Hi, Kim Christie, District 7. And I want to invoke the same comments I made before, but I won't repeat them. And I appreciate your efforts to do the right thing. I think we came up with a reasonable compromise. Uh, that's acceptable. And I do understand that you guys have nothing to do with the Move, move Ascension administration. But I, 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 I'm touched by the number of citizens that came here tonight to talk about their drainage issues. Uh, in a catastrophic event like we had in 2016, we all know that the high land it stays dry and the people who have been here for years get flooded and I've heard it before drainage is nothing new well we need to get more stringent drainage ordinances passed right away and you guys being the Planning Commission I think you can go to the council parish council and urge them to do so because we're hurting the citizens who have been here for years. The gentleman said it tonight, water does not flow uphill. You can, you can have the best engineering you can get, but in a catastrophic situation, you're making the situation worse. The new people stay dry. The people who have been here for years get flooded. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ashley Barnes. So I live in West Creek on lot 20 where they plan on extending my road into the new subdivision. And my concern is because as it sits now, my backyard floods. The woods past my lot holds water all the time. So when they clear that out, where's all that water gonna go? Because Black Bayou, as y'all recall, when the storm came through, just a few more feet up, it would have flooded our subdivision. So that's my concern. And right now, our subdivision, when it rains, it holds water everywhere. We also have Prairieville High School coming up. We have a primary school coming up. We have the apartments. We have two other 
subdivisions coming up, so where is all this traffic going to go? So that's my concern because my house doesn't flood now, but I fear when y'all put this, it will. Thank you, ma'am. Joe Robert. We, uh, we, re we really have got to start listening to the people. We do, because the people are watching now. Um, and this is not okay. I mean, this is, you're accountable right here. This is your chance to have this happen correctly, to do it right, to meet the guidelines. We're not doing that. I mean, we have too much traffic as it is, F-rated intersections, and you, you, we have no control. Once you approve this, there's no control over whether or not they do this stuff, no control whether the roundabout's done. Um, and from what I saw, the roundabout can't be paid for by federal funds. So until the roundabout is there, it can't be in the proposal, right? Because the proposed would be something that, grant, something that is not a grant or the developer's funds are building. I mean, that's completely against what's right here. So the roundabout using that can't happen until the roundabout's built. Developer said something about, well, he, he bought this property after. He didn't have the property. Okay, he bought the property after the roundabout was announced. That doesn't mean anything. I mean, that, that's on you. That's your decision to buy the property. Whether or not you meet the guidelines, that's on you. And we can't let them just keep pushing us and pushing us. What do we owe these developers? I mean, I know we're giving them our infrastructure. We're, we're overdeveloping. We're not taking care of our citizens. And I just need you to understand that this is not going to continue. It's not. Um, but we all know what's going to happen, so let's, let's uh, approve this one. But I do want to speak out against it. Thank you, Mr. Robe. Zaza wins. Good evening. My name is Zaza Wenz, and I am a transplant from out of state. We moved here about five years ago because of my husband's job. And I am I had to resign my post, and I was a police officer in Albuquerque, New Mexico, for almost eight years. My concern, along with everything else that's been stated, is of a possibility of a rise in crime in the neighborhood. I've been living in West Creek Estates, and the side that I live on, it dead ends, so it's not on the main drag. I have two small children. They play in the street with their friends. And if it connects there on High Creek, you're going to increase the traffic. And now the children have a higher possibility of, of being in danger by the cars because the moms out there were yelling at the cars to slow down as it is. My, my concern about the crime is that now if we're going to have um, another ingress, egress on another side, you're going to possibly heighten the ability of people to come through, drive through the neighborhood, and have another way to get out. That's one of the reasons why I moved to a small neighborhood. Sorry, I'm nervous and I'm a little mad. <laughs> um, purposely moving to a small neighborhood where my children could go up and they could be a little bit, a little bit safe. And so, I mean, we, we have had crime on our street. We've had car break-ins. We've had those sorts of things. But we band together as a neighborhood where we're looking out for each other. You're going to add 105 homes how are we going to do that? How are we going to be able to suppress people just coming through being lost or they're casing or they're going through and just trying to do things that they're not supposed to do, committing crimes because they're not good people? I know we can't stop that, but if we add this, we're just giving them another opportunity in our small neighborhood. And so I'm definitely very adamantly against this housing development going forward and I appreciate you listening to me thank you thank you that's it we'll go ahead and close the public hearing on this um, mr. Berthelot you, you kind of tried to preempt some of it but you want to respond to any of that well just with regards to connectivity you know that that's something that the parish likes to see okay and I want to I'm going to interrupt you for a second Cody I, I know this issue has come up before 
and I believe the land development code says um, it, it doesn't speak in absolutes. It no, speaks it in that where, connectivity is desired and you should consider it, but it's not a mandatory consideration. Am I right about that? I'll find it for you. Y'all want to keep going? And I'll yeah, well, it's, and, and it's I would mandatory. And I would just say on that connectivity issue, I get both sides of it. Um, quite frankly, I, I see the crime rate because my subdivision has two entrances, and every Christmas we have groups that come through and test every car door, and they just make a circuit through the neighborhood, test every car door, anything that's open, they take it. That's every winter. So I wouldn't object at all if somebody moved to not connect it unless the code requires it. I don't think the code does. I think it says we should consider it, and it's favored but not required. So uh, that's my take on connectivity. We, on and that. we'd be fine with, with that, or we'd also consider uh, working with the HOA at West Creek and maybe establishing some security cameras or other kind of security measures, uh, maybe having a, a joint HOA with the new subdivision. Um, this is, this is going to be a subdivision, like I said, that's going to be uh, probably a little, a little more higher end than West Creek as far as prices just because of where we are now uh, 10 years later than West Creek was built. But, um, you know, we're open to it, either one. If it's going to alleviate some concerns, then uh, we don't mind if, it's that, if they don't connect. Okay. But can I, can I, I mean, my. Hey, let, let, let her no, ask I'm a sorry, question. Yes, ma'am, you can ask a question. So oh. when the traffic is built up on Germany Road and you have cars cutting through West Creek and going through lakes of West Creek, Holland, It's and vice versa, so people could cut through, you could, your subdivision could cut through theirs. It's not Keep a shortcut. It would not be a shortcut. It's a thousand yeah. feet between the two yeah. entrances. Yeah. But the, and, and it looks like it's at the back off of Germany yes. Road. But I, I get, I think we all understand those concerns on connectivity. That is a parish, the, the parish desires it. They don't require it, though. I, I think that, and that's what we're going to look at. Go the, ahead. The other issue from a connectivity standpoint is... Connect, yeah, everybody complains about traffic. One way you alleviate traffic is to create, not funnel everybody onto the same three roads because you only have three roads that go anywhere. So creating a street grid by connecting subdivisions is one way that you alleviate traffic. The other is safety. What if there's a wreck at the entrance of your subdivision blocking your subdivision entrance so you can't get in or out? Or what if, I don't know if you have a pipe that goes under your, you know, gas pipe or something that goes under your road and it explodes and you can't get in or out. So this gives you a second. People haven't flooded over here in 30 years and they flooded two years ago. It, you can't say what ifs on that. Yeah. You, you just have to kind of plan against it. Yeah. I mean, the best practices requires connectivity because of the safety reason, because of the traffic issue. I mean, it, it, I, you know, if they're willing to do something, if the concern is the safety to, to mm -hmm. work with you all on security cameras, I mean, that's great. I, I would certainly recommend that. Um, you know, I don't know as far as the speed. I mean, look, the, the sheriff, I'm sure, would be more than happy to put somebody out there writing tickets. I, I'm sure his budget would, would appreciate it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I know yeah. they did it in my neighborhood when I lived in one and people were speeding, and we did have one way in and one way out, and they were still flying they through still there. They still come through fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, you know, that they, they'll you request it, they'll put a deputy there, and they'll hand out tickets all day until it stops. Mm -hmm. We could possibly make that as a contingency, yes. So, so basically, y'all, what it says is, uh, when you're talking about the major street plan, it says the arrangement of streets in a subdivision shall either, and it goes on to list multiple uh, different considerations. One of them is to provide for the continuation of appropriate projection of existing streets and surrounding areas. And then I can read the rest if y'all would like, mm -hmm. but That's again. about 12 different things you could consider when approving it. Right. Well, the layout of West Creek was designed so that High Creek Avenue would continue on to the adjacent piece of property. So that was the intention at that time. We, we developed West Creek, too, 10 years ago, and the parish had us put that stub out there. Right. We didn't own this property at that time. Right. But with the intention that eventually it would be yes. developed and it would connect. Right. I mean, that was, that was why it was a stub out and not a hammerhead or a... 
whatever. Uh, right, but probably around, since around then, a traffic circle. Yeah, traffic since then y'all y'all rewritten that thing a bunch of times, so you may be okay to mm -hmm. you know to not tie in. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. We we don't mind either way. Well, I've got I've got quite a few uh, things just to kind of acknowledge what, what what the comments were. Um, you know, we, we did have a few uh, residents from from that uh, from the other subdivision who mentioned that they had water in the back of their subdivisions. From what I understand, I looked at some of the preliminary uh, the, the final plots of the previous subdivision. That's all dry detention drainage. That's what it's there for. It's meant to hold some form of water. What what some people are calling flooding. That's not real flooding. That's holding water in your backyard, and that's actually not considered flooding. It's designed to do that. That is a capacity level. Uh, it, it, it's something kind of foreign to some people, but you're, it, it, those ditches, they might not necessarily seem as ditches, but they're meant to hold a level of water and slowly dissipate over time. Um, and that, that is by design. Uh, it, it might alarm you or something like that, and, and it's, if you put your fence in that area, it, it's kind of uh, you know frustrating, but that is by design, and you know that happens. Um, the stub out, I understand. Look, uh, I, we we've had quite a few um, preliminary plats that have come before us at times that people complained about the stub outs or anything like that. You have one HOA, one you know um, a, a subdivision that was uh, that that's that's established and everybody knows each other, and they're all worried about somebody else coming in. Well. This is also Ascension Parish, and why not get to know that other subdivision? And you probably have some of the very same like-minded people as yourselves. Why not just extend that helping hand and get to know these other pe personnel, who and welcome in into the parish? I mean, that's what we always talk about: is hey, welcome here, welcome here, welcome here. This subdivision, I mean, you're almost assuming that they're going to be like a bunch of miscreants, and that's just not fair. I, I, I really, I kind of take offense to people saying stuff like that. Um, I, I know that that possibly could happen, but I, I would just ask that you just kind of keep keep an open mind about things. Um, one of the, one of the ladies mentioned about the home values. Unfortunately, that is something that we have that that we're not actually even able to consider. We can't consider any type of market level or anything like that. I understand that may be a concern of yours, but as a planning commissioner, we can't even consider that in our in our decision making process. That is the market driven and everything else. Um, the turn lanes, honestly, I think that's going to benefit the other subdivision is you're going to have an, another way to get out of your subdivision by going through their subdivision. I mean, everybody's worried about them going through yours, but it's a possibility that you could go through theirs and come out just ahead. Um, but far and beyond everything else, I want everybody to realize we if we would if we were to approve this we would put the same type of contingencies that that infrastructure that they're recommending has to be in place before they could sell the first house so that's what that's that's what everybody's asking for is they're saying infrastructure before the people are there well they can't even sell a house nobody can occupy a house before that either roundabout or whatever traffic improvement that we're all demanding. I live off of Germany. I know how it is. We're demanding it before they can add to it. Um, this is what that code has has been approved on. This is what we've improved, asked for. So everything that y'all mentioned, that's what that's what we would have in this code if we if we were to move forward with this. Um, we're taking into your considerations, and I just want y'all to realize that that that's what that new code that we've all approved on uh, has has stated. Um, I just I, I wish that everybody would kind of understand that I know it's 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 frustrating it's it's different but there are some safeguards in place and I think that your your fears are somewhat um, uh, absolutely valid but that's what these roundabouts we're, we would force that roundabout or force the the light to come in before that they could do anything so they can't add any more houses they can't, you know, Im you know, make make it worse before it has to get better. Uh, just just try to keep that that as and you know, open minded on that. Any other comments, questions, and or motion? I, I, I had a question about the drainage. You said y'all were going to drain between lots ten and eleven, or ten and eleven. You're not. I assume there's not a drainage pipe already there. You're there not. Is. There is? I'll, I'll have Rudy okay. explain, but the way I understand it is there's an existing uh, drainage culvert uh, kind of near the property line between these two properties that 
runs down the length of 10 and 11 underground, but that culvert is getting so much sheet flow right now from the 35 acres that what we're, we're proposing is first of all to have it funnel into our new pond and then come out of a pipe straight and pipe it underground. So there would be no sheet flow. Okay. In a post development situation. It, and the 18 inch pipe is going to reduce the volume or the rate? Yes, yes. The, um, I have to look at the numbers exactly, but it's an 18 inch pipe tying into the inlet that a 36 inch pipe leaves and then, you know, it gets larger as it goes through the system. And you said you're building it, it's going to be able to hold about 17 acres of acre feet, 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 volume. Acre feet. Yeah. So, what is that? Is that like a 100 year, 500, like 100 year? We, yeah, How does that it, translate? It, it, we ran it for the 10, 25, and 100 year, and it uh, retains all of those storm events. Mm -hmm. My other question I had there's no sewer treatment plant on this. So, we've been, uh, th this site actually has the sewer treatment plant, okay. and this will go to the last subdivision as well. Oh, we, I see it now. We are contingency planning to have a sewer treatment site on this, or a sewer treatment plant on this site that would also be uh, from the previous subdivision that was approved. We would force main that as well to this one, mm -hmm. and then uh, have a DEQ approved discharge. We don't want to do that. We're working with councilmen uh, to try to run both subdivisions to the new school site on Germany Road and expand on that sewer treatment plant, which the parish will own 100%. So it's a timing issue. I don't know what's going to happen first, but that's what we're trying to do. But these, these plans show a treatment plant site because that hasn't been finalized yet. Okay. So do we need to put some sort of a contingency relative to that on the approval as well? Well, no. they're obligated to take care of the sewer in both this subdivision and the previous one that was developed. And our initial conversations with the developer um, indicated that they would like to force main the sewerage from that previous subdivision into the sewer treatment plant that's proposed here. And that, that is acceptable to the parish because uh, and regardless, we're going to own the sewer plant and it, it will become ours. The customers here and the customers in the other subdivision will become uh, Century Parish customers. And, um, and so it's preferable for us to maintain one sewer plant instead of two. So, but if we can work out an agreement with the school site, um, that would be advantageous to the parish as well, and that's in the negotiating process right now. But as you see on this particular map, the STP site, the sewer treatment plant site, is located on this on this plant. I see it now. So if if the thing with the parish with the school board works out and you wind up tying into their sewer, what's y'all going to do with that space? That treatment plant site would be would it just stays go away vacant. It, we wouldn't we wouldn't carve it out. Mm -hmm. It would be part of the it's connecting green, part. It's on a green here. space lot already. Okay. Yeah, it'll become part of green space yeah. too. And and you do uh, and you do also acknowledge that again, nothing could be approved. No, <laughs> no certificate of occupancies or anything could be given before those improvements to that road meets the new level of service requirements. Yes, we do. But I'd like to get clarity on what improvement. Are we just talking about the roundabout at Germany and Bro? Well, yes. according to your traffic study, it says that you have to either have the roundabout or the signal to improve it up to right but just germany that. bro intersection is what we're talking about correct that's what this traffic that's what this germany and bro germany and bro. Germany and bro yeah yeah that intersection and yeah we we, we agree with with that contingency that's fine right. any uh, other questions that? comments or a motion uh, I'm, i'll uh, make a track a motion motion I'll make a motion to approve with the following two conditions of approval. Condition number one is that no certificate of occupancy will be issued on this subdivision until such time as the roundabout at the intersection of Broad and, Broad and Germany be completed, open and fully functional, or that a traffic light be installed and be fully functional and implemented into the tr parish's traffic intersection light program. Condition number two is that um, as part of the development of the subdivision, a, both a left and a right turn lane that meet parish requirements be constructed at the entrance of the subdivision, including the dedication of any right-of-way uh, needed to accommodate both turn lanes. 
Got a motion. Do I have a second? Is that a motion by Mr. Dumas, second by Mr. Bishop. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item 11C is uh, Bell Savan subdivision major revision. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. It might address uh, that item has been pulled uh, oh. at the request of the developer. Okay. Good. It makes that easier. <laughs> item number 12, uh, number 12 on the agenda, old business. Mel G Grave preliminary plat waiver request quality engineering. Mr. Murphy, I'm assuming you're here for that. You've waited all this time and your <laughs> audience is leaving. Yes. I'll wait a minute and let them get out. That's okay with the commission. It's fine. No, I didn't, just keep going. I didn't have anything in my packet on this one. Do we? That we're supposed I, don't, to have I didn't something? have anything in my either. packet either. Be before you go, um, Mr. Funia, can you give us a, like an update what this is? At a previous planning commission meeting, um, the Melgrave subdivision, which is along Severio Canal, um, which was previously a campsite subdivision, was approved, and the developer at the time asked for three waivers. Two of the waivers were uh, applicable to the street that, that was uh, part of that subdivision. And those two waivers basically waived the cross-section of the street as well as the elevation of the street. The third waiver that was asked for was for a waiver on, oh, hold on. the... Excuse me. Excuse me. Can y'all... Uh, I'm sorry. Mr. Berthelot, can y'all meet outside so, so we can conduct our business? Thank you. Third, the third waiver was asked for by the developer and denied by the Planning Commission, and that waiver was to... Uh, waived the requirement to have a judicial, uh, jurisdictional determination by the Corps for the wetlands area. This and was taken up at our last planning commission meeting? It was, yes. All right. And I, I, I think I recused myself from yeah. that vote. I ran the meeting only in, as a, a ministerial task, so I'm going to do the same action okay. on this issue. All right. Does do that answer your question? No. Actually, I was going to say our vice chairman's not here, so we'd have to... And what I'm going to do, I'm not voting. I'm just going to oh, run the media. Okay, just run yeah. I'm just going to run this part of this meeting. So, all right. That being said, uh, Mr. Murphy, you can proceed. Well, I just wanted to come back in front of you guys tonight. I'm Derek Murphy of Quality Engineering, representing Melgrave uh, Subdivision. Um, after we left here last time, we uh, was going through the waivers, and, and we uh, we have submitted to the core. Um, as you, as you, we remember last uh, month, uh, the wetlands determination that we had from a consultant showed no wetlands on this site at all. And uh, normally, according to the code, we're supposed to have a wetlands jurisdiction back from the core, which takes uh, probably these days six, seven months, as you will. And uh, so we have started that process. However, we still have to go through and return to you guys for crush construction plans and a final plat. We also we already have houses in here and things like that. And what we're asking the commission to do, we are down that path, but we're asking the waiver again and asking you to reconsider that so we can get the final plat going and get, get these guys uh, with their houses and so forth. We do have some hardship there now. I, I know how, how that is, but we're just here tonight. We are going to go through the process. We are going to get the deter, uh, determination back from the core. We're just asking tonight to reconsider the waiver for having it for the final plat. We, as we know, we have to go through here. We do have a determination from the consultant that says there are no wetlands, and we're just asking uh, for the waiver to be reconsidered tonight. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Or yes. We got a oh, public hearing. I'm sorry. You have a public hearing, I guess. Or do we have to? I don't think this is set for a public hearing, is it? No. Okay. No, it's uh, not. Just if I'm remembering correctly, staff recommended, and I believe the developer agreed with, there was going to be a requirement put on the plat that the road remain private in perpetuity, and I don't think that was added to the original motion when it was made. So I assume if your whatever motion is made today with the waiver request, you'd also be willing to con agree that the road remain private in perpetuity and that that oh, be absolutely. added as well? The last part of the agreement has always been, mm -hmm. been considered that yeah. way. I th yeah, I think it was supposed to be made as part of the original motion, and I think in dealing with the other variances, that one may have inadvertently gotten left off. Mm -hmm. Right. 
And look, this is just about a timing issue. Uh, that's all it is. We have, like I said, we do have houses out here, and uh, we we if we had a consultant that came back with wet possible wetlands, that's a different story. He he. Uh, this is a very uh, uh, a very uh, an expert in his field. He's, he uh, claims there is no wetlands. That is his professional opinion, and he has submitted that to the core uh, to start that process. And, and, and part of the issue, too, was that they built houses in a subdivision that didn't comply with the original grant given to him by the parish and built a road that he wasn't supposed to build and kind of created the hardship himself, right? That is, that is correct. Okay. Cody, all of, the, all of this... All of this was constructed without any approvals. Holmes obtained a building permit with an address off a of canal. Only I'm familiar on, with the situation. Okay. My issue with not waiving the plant is because I didn't want to parish to buy any liability if the Army Corps came back and said, no, this is reclaimed land that was reclaimed inappropriately or something like that. Um, I don't mind. I don't mind waiving the plat, provided that we get a, any any indemnity that is suitable to you in the parish. And I don't know that there's a potential for well, liability out there. You'd have to give me some time to research that issue, and then see if that's even something that can be indemnified and held homeless on. Mm -hmm. I, I can't answer that question for you right now tonight because I'm not familiar with the. What, what could happen with the jurisdictional determination is a very specific legal matter when it comes to the core. Well, that's 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 the other thing is if y'all are take if the parish was taking right of way mm -hmm. and that had potential wetlands on it, that's another issue, and I and I agree with that. You don't want the parish to to get dedicated or take over maintenance of a piece of property that may have that. But this is going to be private, first of all, and um, and so in that particular case, it's always going to remain. Right. The other thing is, it's not the jurisdiction of the commission or the parish over, over wetlands, and it, this provision is put in in there. In my opinion, as was to make sure that the parish never accepted wetlands, or or allowed uh, public improvements to be done on wetlands and so forth. But well, I think my concern would be if, for some reason, because there are houses out there, that if the you know core does come back and say there's wetlands, and then we permitted a CO on a house. You know, that could potentially be, well, hey, Paris, you let me move in here without knowing everything you needed to know. So I would have some concern. Now, what's the ultimate liability of the Paris would be something I'd have to research to see if there is any. But there is a red flag that pops up into my head on that yeah. situation. Yes. That, that's probably the reason that yeah. we require a JD before we normally get final plat approval. Well, the question there is then, does any time, if you're on a, on a 100 acres or a one acre lot, does the, does the building department require a JD for just issuing a building permit as well. So I mean, it's the same, it's the same issue. I couldn't get my building permit without a JD. Whatever well, it's I worth. Saw, I and I live in a subdivision. <laughs> Back to be, is that because of the parish or, or, or the lending? It's when I went to go get my building permit, the parish wouldn't give it to me until I got a JD. Right. Yeah, the yeah, we have somebody who went and built a bunch of things without the permits. So. Um, uh, we, I, I, we've already given some concessions. I, I do feel for it. I, I know that this is, look, six months is a long time whenever it comes to something like this. Um, I, I, I just, just have, I have some issues. Cody's done. I, I just, I just Cody. don't. You just want to waiver the preliminary plan or the plaque in its entirety? Just a preliminary plan? Well, no, we already had the preliminary plat was just from the consultant. Right. Next step is the final plat. The final plat requires the core JD, and that's, that's what we're asking for the waiver on. No, I, I think you need to plat those, lat, plat those lots like any other subdivision <laughs> and, and be done with. And, um, and, and I think that um, – can I make a motion to deny the, the request for the waiver with a condition of approval? Th that's what I was yeah. thinking of doing. Well, no, yeah, you can do I mean, that. Can you? I, I don't see why you could. Well, we did not include a You're condition not. the last go around that, that the road remained private. We, it, it was always referenced as a private road, but we didn't condition it. 
as a private road. I, I don't think that's before y'all tonight to do anything on. I didn't if think we so need to either. clean that up, we can put it on the next agenda and, and clean it up. But Right. That's I think not, right yeah, now it's just a waiver tonight. of the plan. It's just a waiver yeah. of the JD is what they're asking for tonight. I, I, I just in good conscience, I don't know what liability it may, may or may not bring to the parish and in good conscience, mm -hmm. I just can't agree to do that. Uh, you know, well, I, can I'm we sorry. ask Cody, your legal counsel, to research it this past month and come back next time? Was that I mean, I can do some research on it, guys, but I can tell you right now the variance ordinance, one of the conditions is that the condition cannot be self-created. Right. So, I mean, there's things that y'all can look at other than just what's the legal requirement of the JD in considering and considering it. And I brought that up last time, and they still granted two variances. So. Right. For what it's worth, we granted some variances that, that were self-created, Cody, but they were they made sense. But the this one to me, the issue it is self-imposed. Number one and number two, it, there's a liability there that concerned me, which is why I was unwilling to to grant it. And I don't know the ramifications. I mean, I may just it just may be a red flag that I don't know the answer to. So. And it is self-imposed, so yeah. with all due respect. You know, just go bite the bullet and go get it. <laughs> we, we oh, they're, it. They're, they's they's submitting it. It just no, it takes them submitted. six months. Life's a and in six months, that's, that's very harmful to them, is what they're coming back with. How many houses are in there now? There's three? Three? Two. 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 There's only two of them. Yeah. Yeah, but if somebody's trying to buy a lot, that's the third one because they're mm -hmm. only ones in there. I think there's two built that are trying to close and one that's trying to buy a lot. I'm going to stick with what we did last time. I'm going to make a motion to deny uh, the, the waiver request. We have a motion on the table by Mr. Shexner, a second by Mr. Chasson. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Is there any opposition to the motion? Motion to deny carries. All right. Uh, moving on to number 13, staff report. Staff has no report. Engineering staff report. Uh, no report. Number 14. Move. Move. To adjourn. Meeting is adjourned. We'll take a few minute break and come back for a zoning meeting.